This presentation is going to look at the diagram that we use to describe the whole economy, which is called the circular flow with injections and leakages. Now, we identify five major groups in the economy, namely households, firms, banks, the government, and the outside world. Let's look individually at what each of these sectors or groups in the economy actually does. Households own all the factors of production, that is to say they own all the land, labor, capital, and enterprise. And so they also earn all the income from these factors of production. They earn rent from land, wages from labor, interest from capital, and profit from enterprise. But households also do one other thing, which is that they consume. They consume goods. So this is the, this is the dual role, the, the double role of households in the macro economy. They act as consumers, and they also own all the factors of production and earn, earn the income from the factors of production. Firms produce goods in the economy, and they also do what's called investment spending. And this means uh, spending money on capital equipment, such as machinery, factories, etc., Banks take deposits from people who want to put money into the bank, and then they lend this money to other people, to borrowers. The government collects taxes from firms and from households, and spends the money on certain things such as hospitals, schools, roads, national defense, street lighting, etc. And the outside world is responsible for our imports, that is, we buy things from the outside world, but we also sell our goods to the outside world in the form of exports. Now that we have seen what the five major sectors of the economy do, let's start with households and firms and see what's going on between them. Households supply the factors of production to firms. They supply land, labor, capital, and enterprise. And in return, firms provide goods for households to consume. This is what's called the real exchange between households and firms. But when we draw a picture of the economy, instead of looking at the real exchange, we look at the exchange of money between households and firms, and we identify what's called the circular flow of money, the circular flow of money. Now, the circular flow of money uh, consists of this letter C, which stands for consumer spending or consumption, and this letter Y, which stands for factor incomes. So consumer spending, on the one hand, is balanced with factor incomes, on the other hand. And the factor incomes is the income that households earn for supplying land, labor, capital, and enterprise to firms. Now, this simple circular flow is not a full picture of the economy, because there are three ways in which money can leak out of the circular flow. Three, what we call, leakages. So let's look at these leakages and see what they are. Well, firstly, some of the money we uh, households earn is actually saved. So we have one leakage in the form of savings. We have one leakage in the form of savings. Now, another leakage is in the form of taxation, because some of the money we earn is taxed by the government and leaks away from the circular flow. And thirdly, when we spend some of our money, when households spend money, they often spend it on imported goods, imported goods. So we have three leakages, savings, taxes, and imports. Of course, if only three leakages happened, all our money would leak away to the outside world, and we would have no money flowing around the circular flow. So we have to have three ways for the money to be injected back into the circular flow, so-called injections. The first injection is when banks lend money, we'll say to firms, and firms spend it on capital equipment, which we call investment spending. Also, governments spend money that we, they get from households in tax, and this is also an injection. And finally, the outside world 
buys goods made in this economy, which is called exports. So these are the three injections into the circular flow. So now we have identified that there are three leakages and three injections. The leakages are savings, taxation, and imports. The injections are investment spending, government spending, and export spending. It's important to realize that the leakages actually depend on the level of national income, whereas the injections are completely independent of national income. To show this in action, imagine that our economy is visualized as a plastic bag with a hole at one end through, water, through which water is dripping out. So we have some water in the plastic bag and it's dripping out of the hole at the bottom. So these, the dripping water, represents the leakages from our circular flow. And it's obvious that the rate of leakage, or the speed with which water leaks out of the hole, will depend on how much water there is in the bag in the first place. And this represents our national income. So, the more we have in terms of national income, the faster water will leak out, or the faster we will have leakages from our economy. So this shows that the leakages do in fact depend on national income. On the other hand, let's look at the injections. We can model the injections as a tap and the water is coming into our economy, being injected into our economy by the tap. Now if we turn the tap on a little bit or turn it off a little bit, the injections will either go up in speed or go down in speed. And this has absolutely nothing to do with the amount of water there was in the plastic bag in the first place. So the injections are not connected with the level of national income, whereas the leakages are definitely dependent on the level of national income. This leads us to the concept of macroeconomic equilibrium. Remember, an equilibrium is a steady state. It's a, it's a situation where nobody has any reason to change their behavior. So let's look at this idea of macroeconomic equilibrium and see what it's all about. Well, imagine that we are in a state of equilibrium where the speed at which water is flowing into our economy, into our plastic bag, which is the injections, is equal to the speed at which it is leaking out. So the level of water or national income in our economy is steady. Now, if we suddenly increase the speed at which water flows into the economy, what will happen? Well, at first, the level of water in our, in our plastic bag will start to increase because the water is flowing in now much, much faster. But as the water level, or income level, in our economy rises, the pressure of the extra water on the whole will cause the water level to, will cause the water to leak out much faster as well. And so what will happen is that after a period of economic growth, where the water level rises in our plastic bag, it will again stabilize, because at this point the rate of injection will equal the rate of leakage. So this is the idea that an economy can move from one equilibrium here to another higher equilibrium here. And at each equilibrium the rate of injection is equal to the rate of leakage. So this idea of macroeconomic equilibrium connects the, the speed or rate of leakages to the rate of injections from our macroeconomy. And we say that whenever the rate of total leakages is equal to the rate of total injections, the economy will be at an equilibrium. But if the two speeds of injections and leakages are different, the economy will either be going through a period of expansion, where the income level is getting bigger, or contraction, where the income level is becoming smaller. So, in summary then, uh, we have seen a diagram of the economy which is called the circular flow. 
we started with a very simple diagram and then we added some ways in which money could flow out of the circular flow which we called leakages and some ways in which the money could flow back in which we called injections the leakages were savings taxation and imports whereas the injections were investment spending government spending and export spending we also saw that the leakages were dependent on the level of national income whereas the injections were completely independent of the level of national income and finally we saw that over a period of time let's say a year if the total leakages from our economy equal the total injections into our economy then the economy will be in a state of equilibrium national income will neither be rising nor falling but if the injections do not equal the leakages over a period of time the national income will either be rising or falling